Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, uh, Denfeld staff. Whenever you might be viewing this video, um, welcome to PBIS 101. This is a foundational uh, video which is meant to onboard all staff uh, at Denfeld High School, whether you've been here for many, many years or you're just uh, starting your, your first year here at Denfeld. Uh, this is an effort to do more flipped learning uh, or flipped information for our staff meetings and less time sitting and getting and more time actually spending time with each other and or doing professional development. Uh, and this is our first opportunity to do this. So we are going to, or I'm going to share a lot of information with you uh, at this point about PBIS uh, to get everyone a kind of foundational understanding of what this is, what it is about and what it is not uh, and what it means to Denfeld High School. So with that, I'm gonna kind of walk you through this presentation. Uh, there is an exit ticket at the end, which you'll be completing. Um, so just so you know that, I want to front load that with you now. So first of all, um, this is really about trying to get everyone on the same page. And so let's start with the acronym, PBIS, Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a meeting and I've heard somebody say positive behavior interventions and supports. It's not behavior, it's behavioral. Um, it's a small detail, but it's something that's been bothering me as long as I've been around PBIS. Um, it's multi-tiered. When you think about multi-tiered, you're often thinking about MTSS, uh, which is a multi-tiered system of support. So um, that is what PBIS is for the behavior side of the pyramid, if you will. Um, but it does provide a structure and organization for our behavioral practices, interventions, and processes. Uh, and it does guide collective adult behavior toward the common goal of student outcomes. Really what this is about is how can we help students be successful in the, within the school systematically and collectively um, so we can meet um, our goals, um, which include graduation. That's the number one reason why we're here. So, um, the collective adult behaviors we're talking about here um, are directed towards a common goal. Uh, if you were in the staff meeting this morning, you heard me talk about this has been one of our, our, our Achilles heels has been the challenge of trying to be on the same page uh, and have collective behaviors. Uh, and PBIS is certainly meant to try to get us moving in the same direction together as a staff. Um, we want kids to graduate and we want them to have the skills that they need to be successful as they navigate not only high school life, but adult life as well. Um, let me move on to the next slide here. Um, you're going to see the house analogy throughout this um, presentation, uh, and PBIS is a framework. Um, it's a big picture overview of core features and how they relate to each other um, to influence a desired outcome. And what we want for our kids, of course, is for them to be functional behaviorally as well as academically uh, towards the goal of graduation. That being said, it is a framework. It is not a recipe. It is not pre-canned. It is not a program. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but really, it's a framework of things that we can customize within that framework, kind of like when you customize and build a house. The house plan may look similar on the outside, but there's going to be some real variation potentially on the layout of the rooms or how you put that together on the inside. And that certainly represents uh, what PBIS is as well. Um, there's that MTSS again, the multi-tiered uh, system of support. That is the framework that provides structures and aligns resources across all areas of academic and social well-being. I think what we, um, depending on how familiar you are with MTSS, I think there's been um, a lot around MTSS on the academic side. Uh, but really, when you look at that three-tiered pyramid that you often see associated with MTSS, there's an academic side. Um, think about response to intervention. There's also the behavioral side, which for many schools across many districts and many states and across the nation is PBIS. And that's because PBIS is a research-based best practice. Um, so that's what that um, you often see is. Uh, the theoretical foundation of PBIS, uh, you can see the four pieces right there. It's a systematic or a systems approach. Uh, it, in, it includes applied behavioral analysis, positive behavior support and prevention science. So let's just take some time and kind of walk through each one of those four pieces. Uh, the systems approach, um, if you think about Denfeld, you can see the graphic on the side of the screen right there. Um, Denfeld overall is an interdependent system. 
we've got classrooms, you've got, as it says, the cafeteria, you've got the main office, all these different parts are functioning within the whole that makes up Denfeld High School. So it is interrelated and interdependent parts. Um, and it's the interactions and relationships among the various parts uh, that impact each other, as well as the functioning of the overall system. Systems are dynamic, which means they change um, and can change and adapt to the environment as the environment changes. Um, there's, they're always moving towards homeostasis, which means they want to remain the same. So um, when faced with changes or unanticipated influences from the environment, systems adapt to attempt to protect the system as a whole. That can mean the system grows and changes or that the system changes out, responds to the outside influence. Systems don't like disruptions, which is what I was referring to earlier. For better or worse, a system as a whole always strives to maintain homeostasis uh, or a steady status quo. If you think about um, Duluth Public Schools, which has seen certainly its share of success and challenges over the years, uh, there's a real desire for systems. And that's kind of why I believe people look at things and say, well, it's a bureaucracy. Bureaucracies are set up typically to function in status quo and to be resistant to change. Um, PBIS is built on the principle that school-wide and classroom systems are interdependent and must effectively and efficiently interact. So it can never be what we're doing as a school per se, as far as when we're out in the less supervised areas of the school, like the hallways, the commons, the bathrooms, et cetera, um, separately from what's going on in the classrooms, really have to approach things um, because they work in concert together. The applied behavioral analysis portion, all behavior is a function and is supported or reinforced by the environment. Um, so behavior is functional. Kids are communicating uh, what they want or need through their behaviors. Problem behavior can be modified to desired behaviors if the functional relationship and reinforcers are identified. You may have heard of talking about like doing a functional behavioral analysis or an FBA to try to identify um, what a student is trying to gain or avoid or obtain or avoid um, through their behavior. Um, once you identify what the function of the behavior is, you can work to modify or adopt or adapt that behavior. And when I'm thinking about it, when you guys fill out a behavior referral um, through Swiss, it is asking you, uh, do you think, do you think the kid is either trying to obtain like peer attention? Are they trying to avoid adult attention? Are they trying to get or avoid something physically tangible? So when you think of those behavior referrals in Swiss, which is the school-wide information system, which is where our referrals are being sent right now, the reason it is asking you to collect that information is so that we can use it to look at the function of the behavior for a, for a kid. Because as referrals pile up for a kid, so does the data around that kid's behavior. And again, that's your perception data and what you think. You don't have to know the answer. You're just going to give your best opinion on whatever happened. Um, but that's kind of the foundation behind it is because what you're trying to do with it with PBIS is use data to make informed decisions. And that can go from a system-wide approach that we were just talking about right down to the individual student approach, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of point out to you as well um, is that research shows that reinforcement is more effective and works more quickly in behavior modification. So what are we talking about? Uh, reinforcement is adding or removing something from the environment in order to increase the likelihood a behavior will occur or continue to occur in the future. Uh, on the flip side, you've got punishment uh, that occurs when a consequence is applied following a behavior and is aimed at decreasing the likelihood of the behavior uh, will occur or continue to occur in the future. Um, it's also important to call out the fact that when we apply consequences without understanding the function of the behavior, which I think probably happens far too often, the consequence can actually unintentionally be a reinforcer for the student rather than a punishment. Um, PBIS is built uh, upon the idea that it's important to get to the root cause or function of a problem behavior in order to find the most effective way to reinforce a desired behavior that will replace the identified problem behavior. Um, I think one of the challenges we face this year and this fall is having enough time to work within PBIS or as an administrative team, including uh, our staff around the building to get to the function of some of the behaviors that we're seeing so we can properly address those like on an individual level. Uh, certainly when the school is functioning not in crisis as we have seen in the past for many of you, 
uh, we have a better shot at doing that. Certainly, this has been one of the biggest challenges we face this year. Uh, positive behavior support. Um, it's described by the U.S. Department of Education as a set of strategies, which is what PBIS really is. There's a lot of strategies to PBIS designed to improve the behavioral success by focusing on how we can change the system, setting, or structure of an environment to help a student. What does that look like? Uh, it includes a holistic approach, looking at several factors inside and outside of the immediate environment, which impacts the behaviors and decisions of a, of a student. It focuses on student strengths rather than the skill deficits and encourages proactive strategies built on those strengths to prevent problem behaviors from occurring. And positive behavior support also focuses on adult behaviors. You've heard that now. This is like the second time you've heard that. Uh, encouraging school staff to form a collaborative network and use consistent instructional strategies. And sometimes those strategies are for classroom management and behavior modification as well. Uh, prevention science piece. You can see there's three tiers across looking from uh, left to right. There's primary prevention, which is focusing on preventing the problem from before it happens. A lot of what PBIS is, is trying to prevent the problem before it happens. Why? How? You try to build skills with kids. You try to set the environment up to be successful. You try to educate the kids. So a lot of that is about teaching the expectations, right? There's secondary prevention, which focuses on early detection or concern uh, and prevent worsening of things. One of the things that we tried to accomplish with the focus room before the pandemic started was a pre-referral way for a kid to get a timeout. So before the teacher uh, submits a referral uh, or before things blow up, let's do a pre-referral, get the kid through the focus room, get them processed, get them de-escalated, and then continue on their way. So it doesn't lead to something like a referral or even worse, an out-of-school suspension. Um, and then finally, there's the tertiary prevention, which is focusing on managing or slowing or stopping the progression of the concern, uh, which could include the direct treatment that restores the function and improves the quality of life. So um, that's the prevention science. Again, PBIS is a lot about trying to front load expectations, teach, reteach, reinforce to prevent things from going um, where they where we don't want them to go with kids, which is eventually going to get them out of class and out of school. The uh, Denfeld PBS house. We talked about PBS 101. We talked about a framework um, around the building. Um, so now we're going to actually talk about the boards that make this up. Um, the four core concepts um, that we have. This is not PBS is not just to go back to this. Um, PBIS, again, as a framework is not something that's prescribed. It's not canned. So when we've gone to training and implemented PBIS twice historically at Denfeld High School, they don't tell you how to do it. They show you what, what the critical components are, and then you get to develop them. All the source stuff you see around the building is customized to Denfeld, right? We get to identify the behaviors. We get to define what those look like um, throughout the building. So it is a framework here are the pieces, the critical pieces you have to do because we have to implement this with fidelity. If we don't implement with fidelity, we don't get the results. So, um, but it is not dictated to us. It is something that throughout the years, many of you have been on, been on PBS or you've been around it. It is something that we get to customize to our environment, to our student population, and to the needs of our staff as well. Um, but let's take you through some of these foundational pieces here. Um, interrelated school-wide and classroom procedures and routines. Uh, we talked about that a little bit, bit earlier. It's a systems approach, right? It's interconnected relationship and interaction between that school-wide piece and the classroom routines and procedures that are going on as well. Um, second of all, it's use of evidence-based practices, programs, and interventions. And again, PBIS, there is a mountain of data around PBIS. PBIS can and does work across all settings and schools. Um, it really comes down to, do we want it to work? And are we willing to work together to make it work uh, with our kids? And that has been a real struggle for us, for sure. Um, thirdly, it's about collecting data and using it to screen student need and monitor and assess student outcomes. Um, and this can be looking at grade level data, um, as well as uh, data for individual kids and we get and have an opportunity to collect all of it through our Swiss system. And it's shifting the focus to proactive and preventative strategies um, that allow schools to respond and not react. Um, 
I do think uh, we spend a lot of time in reaction. We spend a lot of time in crisis. It is exhausting. It is not effective. It is not efficient. The goal of PBIS is, is to move certainly towards proaction and response and get away from reaction as a whole. Uh, one of my favorite slides right here, um, I usually think of the pyramid as um, vertical. This is a horizontal pyramid right here, uh, working from left to right. Tier one, universal practices um, in a pyramid scheme. This is typically the biggest chunk of the pyramid. It's at the bottom. It's for all students. So um, if you are teaching a behavior to every single kid in the building about uh, what it looks like to behave yourself in an assembly, um, that is engaging all students and staff across every setting and location across the building. Uh, and again, what you're trying to do is set the common expectations so that it's consistent, positive, and proactive for your school climate. The second tier, which is often uh, in most pyramids that you see, is the yellow pyramid or the yellow portion. It's the middle size pyramid in the middle. Uh, this is for students where they're often grouped together. Um, it's often designed for groups of students. And so they have similar skill deficits. So you're gonna to try to provide those skills to that group together. Uh, and then you have tier three, which is much more intensive, much more individualized. And so you go from teaching everyone what a common expectation looks like to potentially working with groups of students around that and eventually working individually uh, with students and their families to try to provide the skills and support that they need to be successful. So this is simply a horizontal version of a vertical pyramid. The underlying theme here um, is that we can and should um, be teaching behavioral expectations and skills the same way we teach academic subjects and skills. We can't assume uh, when they come into our classrooms that they know the content that we want to teach them. We also can't assume, and I think we've seen this more and more, uh, for those of you that have been in the education game for a long time, we can't make the assumptions that they have those behavioral expectations and, and are familiar with those as well. So the front door that we're talking about that's highlighted right here um, invites people to enter and it also keeps unwanted guests out, okay? Um, in the same way, the front door of PBIS is the boundary or gatekeeper that allows programs, interventions and strategies or educational practices to cross the entry to enter our school operating procedure. Um, the underlying theme again of PBIS is the belief that behavior is something that can and should be taught um, using the same strategies and practices we teach with academic skills. I think sometimes that's where the challenge is, is that we approach our, our, our students academically uh, with that passion and vigor. Uh, sometimes we don't approach PBIS the same way uh, because we don't feel like we're experts in it. We're not as comfortable explaining it. Uh, but really, this is just as important because the behaviors are the things that are getting away from some of the academics. So we really need to approach them both equally um, so we can get to the things that are going to help them graduate from high school, which is eliminate the behaviors and help them with the academics. Uh, the floor plan of the house. We've moved inside the house. We're looking at the different rooms now or the floor plan. Um, again, here's the blueprint or, or the vision of what we are striving for when PBS framework is fully implemented. Uh, the blueprint is the essential components of the framework laid out as defined by the Minnesota Department of Ed or MDE, um, as well as the US Department of Ed uh, around PBIS. The leadership team of PBIS uses the tiered fidelity inventory. You've probably heard about that before at staff meetings. It's a TFI to measure the implementation progress in each of these essential components. And again, those components you can see on the screen. Um, there's a process to establish, define, and explicitly teach behaviors, which happen before school. Um, we have a system for providing feedback and acknowledgement to students who meet expectations. We have a system for responding to students when they don't meet expectations. And we have a process um, for making decisions based on data, uh, including stakeholders, which has been really challenging over the years. We often have staff involvement, but we don't have uh, regular parent involvement or student involvement. Um, we've had some limited success with that in the past, but not um, regular um, involvement. And then it all comes down to um, evaluation and continuous improvement um, because it's never going to be done. We're never going to be good enough to say that we've met that. We're just going to move on. So thank you. Um, so it is, and I don't care if it's PBIS or it's BAR or it's Check and Connect, which are some of our big three pillars at Denfeld High School. 
We're never going to get to a point where you can say, yep, we've got that 100% implemented and now we can just move on to something else. It's always going to be um, a process for um, continuous improvement and making things better uh, because as soon as you get complacent is when we're going to run into problems. All right. So the next screen up here is talking about expectations. Uh, the blueprint directs what rooms need to be in the house. And the TFI tells us what furniture pieces should be within each of the rooms. So here's an example of a blueprint that um, directs that we create space for behavioral expectations. Within that room, the TFI says that we need to do these things. We need to have a process for establishing and defining behavioral expectations. We need to have five or fewer school-wide behavioral expectations. They need to be positively stated. Um, we need to provide examples of these expectations in different school locations, which is why you see um, the SOAR expectations, spirit, opportunity, achievement, and respect. You see those on um, posters in the hallway or in the auditorium or in the learning spaces across the school. Um, and while the behaviors are the same, um, the specific expectations in those different um, areas are different. Um, we create and post the behavioral expectations um, throughout the building. You can see it all one over my shoulder right here for learning spaces. And we have a process for teaching and practicing these expectations. I think one of the things that we struggle with too is that we teach the expectations. I don't think we come back and reteach those enough. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to reteach your entire class, although sometimes it does. Sometimes it's going to be reteaching that same kid potentially what those expectations are to make sure they can meet those. All right. Um, the next page here. Uh, we've discussed throughout this presentation that the PBS framework provides a general structure, right? That's the outside of the house um, and within each room. Uh, we get to decide the various interventions, practices, and strategies that come through the front door that add the color to how we decorate each room. Um, or in other words, we how we achieve the goals and intended outcomes of each essential element. Back to our example, the expectations room. These are just some of the examples of strategies and practices that we could use to add the color to how we establish and teach expectations. And as you can see on there, uh, we talked a little bit about this morning at the staff meeting, restorative practices and getting some staff trained around that. Culturally responsive practices. We've had a lot of opportunity at Denfield over the years to do that, whether it was through the intercultural work that we did or whether it was through the SEED program a couple of years ago. Social emotional learning, which Bar does through iTime and our 10th through 12th graders have done uh, last year. Uh, and we'll be starting up again, or trauma-informed practices, which I think most of us agree from the um, professional development day that we need a lot more, um, a lot more information on to work with our kids. All right. So the PBI's floor plan again. Um, these are the same things that we already talked about, and you can see that they're colored. Um, without PBI's, Denfeld can have several different programs, strategies, and interventions that function in silos. You hear a lot about silos in education, certainly within Duluth Public Schools, and without collaboration. I think whether you're looking at a district level or within Denfeld, we know that that's not going to be successful. We could end up with rooms that work in, in, independently and potentially against each other or against the vision of the whole system. The PBS structure and organization provides the unifying color scheme for integrating Denfeld's various behavioral intervention strategies and programs into a cohesive and functioning system. While each room has its own function, PBS organizes the overall house by providing common language, common expectations to create a stable and consistent environment that's predictable and easily recognizable as students move from one room to another. All right, back to uh, this room. Um, we've got some expectations again. So um, what do we have here? So you have um, the rooms are going to look different. We can add color from various strategies or practices or programs that we bring through the front door. The purpose and function of the room remains the same, but the look of how that is accomplished changes with the strategy, practice, or program. So um, this is an expectation room, right? So you can see that we have the expectations posted. You can see that they need to be positive. Um, you can see that they need to be defined uh, on the bookshelf there. Uh, you can see that we need to teach them and then we need to practice them. Those are all defined there. If we're looking at it a little bit differently, um, this is a different strategy talking about social emotional learning. So the room is gonna look differently, right? Um, so, 
the function of the coach within a reach room is to serve the pro, um, the pro, as the process for teaching and practicing the behavioral expectations. However, the couch will look different if we select social emotional learning uh, lessons as a strategy to accomplish that goal. So you hear the word fidelity a lot, um, meaning are we doing it the way it was designed to be done? So what are we really trying to accomplish with PBIS? This is what we're supposed to be getting and achieving if we are doing PBIS to fidelity. Reduced referrals and suspensions, increased classroom attendance, uh, increased academic engagement and achievement, because of course you're eliminating a lot of the distractions, increased graduation rate, increased positive perception of school climate among students and staff, so we want to create and maintain a positive, predictable, safe environment that ensures that Denfield operates effectively and efficiently and is relevant to all students. We want all students to develop and learn social, emotional, behavioral, and academic competence that supports academic engagement and outcomes. Um, we've talked a lot about this through the continuous improvement team last year is what, what do we want a graduate to know and look like? Like, what does a Denfield grad look like? Um, and part of getting there is providing an environment that fosters them to be successful, whether they're in the hallway, the commons, the bathroom, or the classroom so that they can get what they need academically and we can support them to graduate. What PBIS is not, it's not a curriculum, it's not a program or initiative, it's a framework. Um, it's not about address, it's not about not addressing problem behaviors. Um, the school discipline policy handbook does not go away with PBIS. So it is not about avoiding problem behaviors. Um, it is not a reward system focused on only good things. It's not about using rewards as a band-aid or pacifier for short-term compliance. Um, it's not something that only works in other types of schools and not here. It's not a quick fix that one person or one team can do. Um, I think the word that's popping up in my head right now is integration. It's integrated, right? Um, whether it is school-wide areas like the hallways or it is the classrooms, it's integrated. I don't like using the word reward. Um, I like thinking about it as one of two things. One, we talk about recognizing kids who meet and exceed our expectations, um, and then we talk about reinforcing them for doing that. I don't like the word reward. You often hear rewards associated. In fact, we used to call sore cards, sore rewards. It is certainly not about rewarding kids for doing what, what they need to. It is about recognizing when they do that. We all know how good that feels when somebody recognizes us for doing something. We might even think is, is mundane or ordinary or normal. It still feels good when somebody says um, that you did a nice job on something, even if that is doing your job, which is what we're expected to do, but it still feels good when somebody says uh, and when somebody recognizes that. So in summary, oh, I'm going to go back to one thing, though, real quick. As I'm looking at my notes here, um, I think it's important to talk about um, it's not something that can't work at Denfeld. I think people go, God, we've been working at this a long time. Yeah, and I think we've never been closer um, to being fully implemented on a tier one level across Denfeld. Um, we're certainly starting to see some things that we've never seen before, which is student recognition on a level that we haven't seen before. Um, I will tell you that when you walk into a building like St. Cloud Apollo or you walk into St. Cloud Tech, and I've been in both those buildings, one is, you know, probably a 60 year old building. Um, there's a feeling of competence and calm. And we're talking about buildings that are large, that are diverse, um, and that are functioning at a high level, due in large part um, to PBIS. So it can and will happen here. And we are closer than we've ever been. And I say that you're probably thinking I'm crazy when you look at how challenging the fall has been, but the pieces are starting to fall in place. Once we get kids used to being back in school, um, we're going to see some tremendous gains. I'm very confident of it because we are starting to move in a direction we should have moved in years ago um, with not only trying to teach the behaviors, reinforce the behaviors, consequence the behaviors, but also recognize the kids. Because let's face it, it came up today in the staff meeting. Um, we have 97% of our kids doing pretty okay. Well, let's recognize them for that. Let's tune them up as well when they need it uh, by teaching and reteaching um, expectations and holding them accountable. And then we can move the whole building forward. Um, the other piece too is, let's come back to it for a third time, adult behavior. Um, effort and consistency drives the success of implementation. 
Um, and that is something staff in any school with any age or demographic concern can accomplish. Collective commitment ensures the success of PBIs in any school. So what we do together, um, I said it in the staff meeting this morning, I would rather do less but do it well and be on the same page than try a bunch of things and not be very good at it because we're all moving in a different direction. Um, it is not a quick fix. We fix. We've been working at this for a long time. But again, um, if we embrace the challenges that we have together collectively uh, and we stay on the same page, we can move forward. Um, it's not that we can't bicker behind closed doors um, and and have some back and forth and negotiate what we collectively agree to. But once we walk out those doors, we got to try to make it stick. So in closing and in summary, um, PBIS organizes how we define, teach, and respond to student behavior. I love the focus on the word response to instead of react to because we want this to be proactive. It shifts how we view and respond to the problem behavior using a proactive, strengths-based, solution-focused lens. It builds the skills needed to self-manage behavior. That's ultimately what we're doing when we talk about kids. Kind of like you build their academic skills so they can write that paper themselves. Um, we want to build their self-management skills so they can manage and, and navigate the complexities of being a young adult in a high school, which is tough. Um, it's a commitment to creating a school culture that supports achievement for all students. Um, we've often heard this, that Denfeld's a school of two schools. Um, what we need to do is bring those two schools together so we can collectively succeed. Um, and it is a tall order, um, but we can do it together because I think if we are unified, there's nothing we can't accomplish. And I know that sounds cliche, um, but there's one thing we know for sure, which is that if we are divided, we'll never accomplish it. Um, and part of the challenge this fall is that there's a lot of division, but I also see us coming together and being more supportive than I've seen in a long time as well because of the collective struggle that we're in. So let's try to move from collective struggle to collective success by staying together as a staff and moving in a common direction. Again, bicker in private, but present a unified uh, front when we move forward with the decisions that we have to make to move the building forward. Well, this has been a lot of talking, um, so it's been really long. Uh, don't forget to do the exit ticket uh, when you're done with this. Um, and certainly the idea behind this going forward is that we will do more stuff in a flipped format so that when we do get to a chance to come together monthly for a 50 minute staff meeting, um, that you can bring your concerns or questions instead of us having to present the information and then get the questions and concerns. You have more time to sit in the information and get them answered. In the meantime, you can use the frequently the FAQ or the frequently asked questions document to interact, whether it's about PBIS or something else. I will tell you in closing that again, this is not just about how we do PBIS. It is also about how we implement BAR and check and connect and co-teaching um, and eventually our PLCs. If we're doing those things to fidelity, the research is there that we'll get the results. Um, so this is one of those big pieces in this building. And this is the biggest piece because this impacts all our kids and all our staff across the entire building. So that's why we're focusing so much on this. That's why it gets so much attention. And that's why I'm very excited that we are getting as close as we've ever been to getting through tier one intervention, which or implementation so that we can move on to tiers two and three. Um, so we can move to those small group interventions and those individual, individual interventions uh, to start moving our building together. Enough talk from me. Um, thanks for being a great absent audience. Um, if you have questions, go to the FAQ and or send an email, make a phone call, stop down so we can talk about it and uh, we can move forward from there. And whether you're seeing this in the morning, afternoon or good night, have a good day.